to sit down. I'm the physical fitness person. Oh, you said already. Right. Okay, it's all right. Ah, Deacon Bill did. And pastors and stand up. Come on, stand up. We're gonna we're gonna pray again. We pray a lot. Father, we stir the anointing right now. In Jesus' name. Father, the word says, They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Father, we release strength to your people in the name of Jesus. Strength in all areas. For the Lord declares even this day, I'm strengthening you, both body, spirit, soul, mind, in all ways, says the Lord. There's a new level of the anointing coming upon this house. You will see it, says the Lord. Surely you will see it. You will see the manifestation of my glory, even in this place, says God. For surely you have been praying for this for years, says the Lord. And it shall come to pass, for I have declared it so, says the Lord. And so the Lord said, Think not, it's strange the fiery trials that have come upon you, says the Lord. Think not, it's strange, says God. For the enemy also knows a certain extent, says the Lord. But the Lord says, Rejoice, for I have overcome, says God, and I have overcome even through you, says God. The Lord says, I've put my anointing upon you, says the Lord, to be overcomers, says God. And the Lord says, You are victorious through my blood, says God. It's my blood that was shed for you says the Lord. My blood, says God, caused you to be an overcomer. You do have victory in Christ, says the Lord. And so the Lord says, proclaim it this day. The Lord says, yea, even shout it from the housetop, says the Lord, and rejoice, for this is the day the Lord has made. So Father, we just shout again on one, two, three. We're going to shout again. On Andrea had it right. We're going to shout again. One, two, three. Ho! Lord, we just thank you right now for that word. Father, we stir up the anointing in Jesus' name. We release the prophetic and the apostolic right now in Jesus' name. And Father, I thank you, Father. Let this sermon go as you would have it go, Father. And Lord, we thank you, Lord, for anointing the word today. Thank you for the miracles, the signs, miracles, and wonders that are going to occur today, even through the Facebook, Father. Whoever wants it is going to receive. And Father, we thank you, Lord. Yes, God. Yes, God. We release it right now in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm still getting feet, people with the foot problems. Amen. Claim your foot healings right now in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you, Father. Yes, God, for healing feet right now in Jesus' name. Alice King, you're one of them. Amen. Father, we just thank you right now in Jesus' name. Father, we release that healing right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Someone has something on the, on the right side below the knee. It's in the calf area. Whoever that is, if that's you, trad it in, or you know somebody, you're going to stand in the gap for them right now. I see it. It's, it's uh, very, I would almost say it's a broken bone, but it's painful on the right side. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just release healing right now. In Jesus' name, to whoever that is, Father. Yes, God, in Jesus' name, be healed. In Jesus' name, by his stripes, we are healed. First Peter 2.24, we claim that for you right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Okay, you can be seated. There's going to be sometimes we start preaching and the Lord will say, go into healing. Amen. Praise God. All right. We want to uh, thank, uh, there's some guests here today. I want to thank you all for coming. Amen. And not being afraid of CDC and, and the protocols for COVID. And we claim Psalm 91. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Uh, Shannon, uh, Shannon Harrison or whoever. Thanks. Thanks for joining us. Amen. All right. And Sydney Gray, whoever. Amen. All right. And I know Zaire is here. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. All right, I want you to turn to um, Isaiah chapter 53 today. And uh, for those of you who had, have not heard part one of my testimony, uh, the Lord told me that this is going to be part two. There might even be a part three. But uh, on December 21st, uh, the Lord told me to give my testimony. And uh, I'm just going to recap. I'm going to give you what's called the cliff note uh, really quickly for some of you that didn't hear it. Um, some of you see when, with the roll later, but that's a miracle of God because the devil tried to kill me several times. But God, amen, the Lord did not let him. Amen. And all of you, he probably tried to, but God, right? Amen. So we are victorious in Christ. Amen. <laughs> Jacob wrestled with the angel, and he had a limp after that. So we may be wrestling and have a limp, but God, <laughs> we're still living. Amen. We're still breathing. We're still serving him, right? Amen. Because of his, his anointing, because of his blood that was shed for us. Amen. Amen. So no matter what we look like, whether we've got a buggy or not or a cane or not or whatever, we're still serving them because of Jesus, right? 
Amen. Praise God. We're not going to stop. We are, you know, Jude, <laughs> look very quickly. Jude 1 3, as I can tell, it's already prophetic, <laughs> prophetic sermon. Jude 1 3, what does Jude 1 3 say? Amen. Beloved, while I was very diligent to write to you concerning our common salvation, I found it necessary to write to you, exhorting you to contend earnestly for the faith. We are contending for the faith. Amen. You know what contending means? You're fighting for it. You're an athlete, okay, and you're, you're running the race. Amen. And there's other scriptures that talk about running the race, right? We're all running a race. Amen. I don't care who you are, what culture you come from, race, gender, whatever, country, whatever. Amen. You can be sure if you're, if you're trying to serve the Lord, the devil's going to challenge you. But you're victorious in Christ. And we are contending for the faith. Amen. Praise God. And greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Amen. So the, so the cliff note of my part one of the testimony was on December, let's see, what was October 28th. I fell on the handle of a rollator like that. I lost my balance. I was diagnosed three years ago with um, a neurological dis disease that came out of nowhere. It's not in my family. It's not in my generational bloodlines. Uh, it just came out of nowhere. Uh, if you were to ask me in the natural, because all the doctors do, the only thing I can tell them is I was near the burn pits in 2005 in, in Iraq. You all know I'm a retired colonel, and I did 32 years in the military, active duty, and I did a lot of trips to the Middle, uh, to the Middle East. And um, uh, I was there in 2003, 2005, 6, 7, 8, 9, and I did a year from 2011 to 2012. And I was near the burn pits. They had burn pits in Iraq. And they don't have OSHA over there or government controls. So all they do is they burn everything, chemical, biological, whatever it is. And um, so there's a lot of soldiers today, a lot of military that was over there in that time frame that have neurological problems. And, um, but I don't subscribe to that, uh, you know, but I can tell you this, what the Lord did teach me, that uh, our DNA has been corrupted, right? All mankind sins through Adam and Eve, right? And that's why we need a Savior. And as you age, things change in your body. There's chemistry that changes. And then you've got generational things that come down to you. You know, all the insurance companies want to know, did your great-granddaddy do this or that, right? Or did he have cancer? Did he have that, right? Because they're aware that some things come through the, through the bloodline. So we always break off generational. We call them curses. We break that off in Jesus' name. And we declare our generations and the future ones don't have that, right? Because the blood has been shed for us. Amen? But if you don't know to do that, or you don't know how to contend for the faith. That's why we got to contend for it. We got to fight. We got to fight the devil. Amen. And that's why we teach warfare. Right? Amen. Because Jesus has made us victorious through him. Amen. So we're contending for the faith. And that's what I'm doing right now. And that's what you're doing. We're contending for the faith. Right? We're not going to give up because of God's grace. Amen. But on October 28th, I fell on a rollator like that one. And uh, it's hard plastic. Lost my balance because of this neurological problem weaken my muscles and I fell right over and I fell on my, my rib it was very painful turned out to be a hairline fracture I didn't find out till later but at the time when they took the x-ray they didn't, they didn't find any any fracture and uh, so anyway but what they did find in my bloodstream was CO2 carbon dioxide was so high that I should have been dead it was at 83 and this is documented it was at 83 and the normal range is 35 to 45 and I was wondering why I was sleeping a lot I was losing weight. I was down to 87 pounds. I couldn't hardly eat. I was choking, um, getting confused, a lot of things going on. And it was all because the CO2 levels in my body were too high. And uh, so it was a blessing that I fell. Otherwise, I would have never found out And because uh, I normally don't go to hospitals. <laughs> and uh, I'm not real good at taking medication. Uh, now i got to be obedient and do it. But, uh, but anyway, so it got me into ICU at Walter Reed. They shipped me from Belvoir to Walter Reed. And uh, when I went to ICU, and they were going to air evac me. I'll never forget that. I was wondering, why are you air evacuating me? And air evac, it means uh, by chopper. And normally you only do that in the combat zone or something, you know, a real emergency, right? And so they finally decided that it was actually faster to ground transport me. So I knew something was up when they wanted to chopper me into Walter Reed, I thought. And, and now I was lucid the whole time. I, my brain was working. I, you know, I was talking to him. Uh, I told him, in fact, I had to go to the bathroom. <laughs> uh, you know, everything 
to me, I thought was normal. I was just, you know, losing strength. Maybe I needed to eat some more meat, you know, or vitamins or something, you know. And so they didn't tell me. Uh, well, they, they said my CO2 was high, and that's all they said. Well, I don't know anything about this. I'm not a medical person. You know, then I didn't know. Anyway, they got me to Walter Reed in ICU, and when I got there, there were five neurological doctors standing around me, looking at me. And uh, I was conversing with them right away. And I was trying to find out what was going on so I could start praying. And I had my, my iPhone with me. And bottom line was that I was orchestrating prayer for my ICU bed with my, with my iPhone. And they expected me to be dead or at a very minimum in a coma. And I told them right away I'm a, I'm a preacher. Now, I, you know, I right away thought, okay, what's God up to? You know, what, what's going on? Um, why am I not healed yet? You know, whatever, you know? So I started, I told the, the doctors right away because they were trying to ventilate me or intubate me. And I didn't want that at all. And um, I'd already had some choking problems. I didn't want a tube going down my throat. And uh, so I made a deal with them. I said, and the spirit told me this. Now, you know, we prophesy, right? We get words, right? Right? Can't the Lord spell it out for us? Can he give us a dream or a vision right on the spot? Can he give you a word and tell you it's stuff in paragraphs? But he doesn't. Now, he might do that for somebody else. But for us, we got to walk in faith too. Amen? Somebody said, well, prophet, prophesy to yourself. <laughs> Amen? we got to rely on the Lord too, right? we got to all walk by faith. But he did talk to me, not in paragraphs, but he told me enough. Okay? So he said, tell him that, you know, uh, ask him what the thresholds are. So I'm a program manager, and I asked him, I said, well, what number do I need to get down to? Because they want to ventilate me right away int and intubate me. And uh, I said, I don't want that. I said, and, and the guy said, well, you could die. And I said, I'm not going to die. God is with me. I'm a preacher. I believe in miracles. Let's, let's give God a chance. Okay, so I said, what threshold do you need? Okay, so he said, well, if you get it down to even 50, 45 is better, but if you get it down to 50, we won't bug you about the intubation and the ventilation. So I got on the iPhone right away, and I asked the troops to start praying, and all you were praying, amen, praise God for you. And uh, within 72 hours, it dropped down to 45. And praise God. And so they saw the numbers coming down. They were taking blood of me every two hours. Can you imagine? Every two hours, they were poking me and, and grabbing blood because they were checking CO2. And, but the numbers were coming down. Praise God. And, so th and they put this BiPAP thing on me, which at the time I was having claustrophobia problems because I, there was sleep deprivation going on also. And uh, there was huge anxiety attacks. Sleep deprivation alone can kill you. And I understand now what the Vietnam guys went, went through. And um, it, it's terrible. I'm going to tell you something today. If it weren't for Christ, if it weren't for God, we could all go crazy in a heartbeat. Because those attacks on me were multiple, simultaneous, different things going on. And I had several uh, a apostolic, uh, high-powered apostles covering me, as well as you all. And it took all of it. It took all of it. And the God showed me firsthand, if it weren't for his covering of us, we think we got problems right now. <laughs> you haven't seen anything. You haven't seen anything. That devil would try to take us out if he, if, if he could, okay? He'd try to make you crazy in a heartbeat if he could, okay? I just praise God for the power of God. I just praise God for him, man. I learned firsthand it is the power of God that allows us to stand, to sit, to eat, to drink, to sleep, to do anything that we do. I'm telling you. That devil is nasty. He's nasty. And he will try to take you out any way he can. If he can't kill you, he'll try to destroy something from you. Okay? He'll even use your loved ones against you. Try to turn you against them and them against you. Don't let them do it. It's a devil. Even your husband or your wife, try to get them to do something nasty against you. Okay? If they're saved, you stick by them. You forgive. Amen? Because it's the devil. Amen? There's warfare going on in homes right now all the time. Amen. But you're fighting the devil. You're not fighting your, your spouse or your loved one or your children. You're fighting the devil. He's the enemy. We've got to identify who the enemy is and fight the enemy. And we fight him with the blood of the lamb and the word of God. Amen. Weapons of warfare are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Amen. And I found that the higher we go up in the anointing, the more prayer we need. The more you have to align yourself with people who really believe in God's word. Amen? 
Amen. One puts 1,000 to flight, two puts 10,000. That's no joke. Amen. I had all of you praying so I could even sleep at night. It, 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 anxiety and fears and different demonic attacks, even squirrels jumping up and down on the roof, anything to wake us up during the night every two, three hours so we couldn't sleep. Okay? Uh, um, <laughs> outside racket going on. Okay? We live in our own home. It's a racket going on. I mean, squirrels, animals. One, one night a bird flew against the window. Flew against the window. Two o'clock in the morning. Whack. And you're wondering, what in the world is going on? Right? Those are all demonic attacks. You rebuke that and break that assignment in Jesus' name. So here I am in ICU, and these doctors, three of them got saved. Okay, from the time I was in ER to the time I got out in rehab, there were 32 salvations. Okay? Because, you know, I'm sorry, but Linda Herbert thought to herself, the devil's going to try to take me out. I'm going to pull so many out of the kingdom of, out of, the kingdom of, of wrath as I can. Amen. I'm doing some payback. Amen. And I prophesied to everybody I could. Amen. And I, God read their mail. God read the mail on some of those doctors. You know, these, some of these uh, in intellectuals don't believe in God. Amen. I just love the gift of prophecy. I mean, not that we're not all smart. Five master's degrees, PhD. I mean, a lot of these very intelligent people, right? But a lot, of, a lot of people, they get into their brain, and they don't realize that they're <laughs> God gave you that brain. Amen. God gave us the ability we have. Amen. But some of them, you know, they, they get so caught up uh, in, in what they're doing, they just, you know, they don't believe in God. And unfortunately, there's, there's a lot of doctors that are like that. And uh, so they just need to be, uh, you know, given the opportunity to hear that there is a God, right? That he's really real. And a lot of them see a lot of negative stuff, so I can understand it. it it's hard to believe. But uh, so the Lord had me prophesy to them. And uh, boy, I was so grateful to the Lord that he opened their eyes. Amen. And a lot of them got saved. I'm just so glad about that. But um, so through that whole experience, amen, after I got out of ICU, uh, then I went, went on to, to rehab, um, they did something like a kidney dialysis on, on me. Um, it, the miracle technology that there is today, and by the way, God releases that too. Amen. It's God. You know, God is good. Everything that's good comes from God. Okay. Medicine did not come from the devil. Doctors did not come from the devil. Amen? Technology did not come from the devil. God released revelation to mankind for his glory to help us. Amen? Praise God for it. And so they, they uh, it was really incredible. They uh, did a, a, it's called Plex. It's a plasma transfer. They took all the blood on my body over the course of five days and shook it up and took the bad antibodies off and put the good guys on. So for about a month, I was doing good. <laughs> and um, the energy level back up and all that. Unfortunately, it kind of weans off after a while. But that's okay. It gave me a fresh start. Amen. And the Lord told me later that he resurrected me. Amen. I came to a place of death in ICU, and he resurrected me. Amen. Praise God. And it was, it was the start of a new chapter for Linda Herbert. Okay, the start of a new, Apostle Enos calls it 2.0. Amen. He prophesied that a couple years ago on me. Little did I know what it meant. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. But the Lord is good. Amen. That he allowed me to go through that. I'm still going through some things, as you can see. But God is good. I've been promised total healing. And by his grace, I'm going to get it. Amen. Because of his blood. Amen. So that's kind of the, 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 the cliff note. So a lot of Christians, they wonder, well, I'm going through this. Okay. But we learn from Bishop Hammond. Amen. That there's a transformation of the inner man. Right? that we're, we're becoming more Christ-like. Well, Linda Herbert needed a lot of cleanup in a lot of areas, and I'm not, God didn't do any of this negative stuff, but out of this, I've changed a lot. Amen? One thing about suffering, and we're going to talk a little bit about that today, one thing about suffering is it changes you. I can tell you for a fact it has changed me. Amen? There's a lot of things I don't care about anymore that I used to. Amen? There's a lot of things I care about now that I really didn't then. Amen? So the Lord is writing some things within my heart. Amen. Things. I believe there's more depth in faith, in trust in, in him, reliance upon him. Amen. More patience all the way around. Amen. Um, more compassion, what I call pastoral. Amen. And uh, But God is, so he's doing a work. So what we have to do, we have to look at the greater good. 
Amen. And I'm not saying you've got to accept negative stuff, but I'm saying while we're going through the process, and it is a process, we have to understand what glory is God getting from this. Amen. While we're in the process. Okay. And so praise God. I just uh, praise God that through this process, there was a lot of healing. Oh, yeah. And I got to tell you about the lady who got healed. So I was at Walter Reed, and I'm sitting there in the bed, and I need a healing myself. And a lady walks in, she has a gastrointestinal problem. And she says, I need a healing. You know, she, she said, you know, the word got out that I was a pastor. And I was a little bit of an anomaly because here I am, a, a, you know, retired colonel, but I'm a pastor too, and I'm not a chaplain. So they all want to know, how, well, what's that story about? <laughs> you know? And, and anyway, people were lined up. They, they would come in my, my, my room for, for prayer. And they'd come in on some kind of pretense. Well, we've got to check your respiratory. Well, they just checked the respiratory. Well, we've got to check it again. Okay, so they got to puff through this little thing a million times during the day <laughs> to show them that my lungs are working. And then they asked for prayer, which is good. Amen. Of course, I made sure that everybody was saved by the time they, they left, just to make sure. You know, and there were people that came in there that weren't saved. But anyway, so God was doing a work. And I even told the Lord, you need to keep me here longer. Amen. For your glory. That's, that's fine, Lord, you know. I mean, whatever needs to be done, let's, let's get it done. And so they even extended me a couple days, and sure enough, some other people got healed and saved. So I just praise God that he used me, first of all. I'm not saying what a hero I am. I'm just grateful to God, amen, that I was allowed to live because I could have gone on to glory because the Lord did give me the opportunity, okay? So I understand people who have passed on. A lot of times we wonder why they've passed on. You don't know what's going on in their heart. You don't know what they're telling God. They might just be tired of this whole scene, okay? I can tell you this is my fourth year of battling this neurological thing, and it has evolved into other medical problems, and so I'm constantly challenged with a battle, okay? And I'm glad I know Jesus. I'll tell you what, I'm glad for all of you. You keep me encouraged. I'm glad for the apostles and prophets who call me, amen? The regional and the executive vice president and the bishop calls and different one call and pray, o pray over me to keep me encouraged. I tell you, that's really important. We've got to encourage one another daily. Amen? Nobody has made it. <laughs> no one's made it. We all need encouragement. Amen? We all need help. Amen? We all need Jesus. Amen? <laughs> so they're, they're wondering, who is this woman? So they came in, and, and you know, God made me small, you know, so I'm tiny. They said, oh, you're tiny. You know, you can't be a colonel if you're tiny. You know, it doesn't matter. You know that God does not look on the outward appearance. He looks on the heart of a man. Amen? We're all different shapes and sizes and whatnot for his glory. Diversities of God. And it's beautiful and pretty. Amen? Just like all the flowers. You know, I saw a vision one time of years ago of heaven, and I saw some flowers. The Lord showed me some flowers. And they, and they looked like there was a whole string of tulips, different, different beautiful psychedelic colors of tulips. And when I walked, I saw myself walking, and the flowers were turning towards me <laughs> as I was walking. They're alive. They were turning towards me as I was walking. Heaven is a phenomenal place. Praise God. But we want to do our time on earth, okay? Amen. We don't want to go too soon, Lord. I'm not, I'm not ad advocating that. I want to finish my mission. Praise God. Because there are ages to come. I've been, I've been harping on this for a while, right? You've been hearing it a lot. There are ages to come. Only what's done for Christ is what's going to last. And this is, our, this is our field of duty right now. What we do right now in these mere 80, 90 years are going to determine what you're doing in ages to come. So don't give up on God. Don't give up on God. Don't throw him away for nobody or nothing. Amen? So, so the lady got a, got a healing. She had a gastrointestinal problem. I said, well, I know there's COVID going on, but I got to touch you because the Lord says touch you. So she got a cold. They touched her. She got a healing in the gastrointestinal area. Isn't that incredible? In the hospital room. Praise God. And I'm still needing the healing. And so I said, later, what about me? <laughs> Amen. The Lord said, you're still in the process. Amen. But I, I just want to um, digress for a minute and just let you know, the Lord has already done a lot of healing in my body. Amen. I had black spots showing up on my eyes, and I'm not seeing that now. Amen. He, he, he's healing eyes. Amen. I had a lot of pain in my ankle from nerves. Okay, the pain is gone. There was a lot of numbing in my feet and toes and stuff. Now it's just one little numb 
every now and then one toe has got a little, some little numbing on it, so we're still working on it. But the rest of it's good. Amen. Praise God. You know, this whole side was prayed for. And I had a lot of pain in my hip and I had big bruises. Okay, that's healed. There's been no more pain here. Okay, I had three fractured lumbar. That is feeling good now the last few days. Amen. And even when I get up from the chair, it's feeling good. So I know it's progressive healing going on. Okay. Praise God. The rib still bites me every now and then, but it's not constant. Okay, anybody ever had a fracture in their rib? I know what I'm talking about. But I, I, I got to keep praying on the biting, you know, biting. If you reach the wrong way, it'll, eh, <laughs> it'll remind you. Okay, so you got to be careful. Keep your arm, because even when I'm doing this, I'm feeling okay because the anointing's on me. But, you know, amen. So he's healing me. My whole body is strengthening. With this neurological problem, there could be weakness everywhere. I can eat. I couldn't eat before. You know, it's a nasty thing. But God is good. Amen. So I just want to give a quick praise report that God is working. Amen. So I made a deal with the, with the doctors, no intubation. They saw the numbers come down. Praise God. They were amazed. Some of them got saved. Amen. They got prophetic words. And then God moved me on to Walter Reed. And then there was more salvations there. And then he moved me on to a, a, a rehab place for 30 days. And there were a lot more uh, that, that took place there. Amen. I, and I even, I forgot to tell you last time, there was even a Muslim who got saved uh, in the, in the re rehab. And um, just some phenomenal things that God did. So we serve a mighty God. Amen. In the meantime, he took care of Linda Herbert, took care of the church. Amen. Praise God. And so now, what is the role of suffering? <laughs> this is not exactly a fun topic, right? So you're, you're all at Isaiah 53, right? Now, you know, Jesus is a suffering servant. And so that's what some of this is about today. Because someone look on, well, I'm going to say, well, Apostle, what, what, what's going on with, with you? How come God hasn't healed you yet? Well, there is progressive healing going on. Some of the healing has been instantaneous. Okay? I really believe uh, before I fell and went into ER to get my rib checked, I could have been dead. I had no idea that the CO2 was that high. I had, you know, who would think that? I mean, I had no way of knowing that. Okay? But Jesus is the suffering servant. Okay? And he suffered for you and I. Amen? It says, Who has believed a report, and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he will grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of dry land, out of dry ground. He has no form or comeliness, and when we see him, there's no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we did not esteem him. All of that tells you that he understands mental anguish. He understands sorrow from the heart. He understands somebody backstabbing you, right? He understands betrayal. He understands all those things. He understands rejection and being dis despised. It clearly says he's a man of sorrows. Jesus went through everything. He was tempted by everything. It says he was tempted in all ways, all these ways, and yet without sin. Praise God. He had to be tempted in all of these things because that was the only way that, that he could die for all of us. Surely he has borne our griefs and, we, and carried our sorrow, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our sin. The chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. Amen? Look at verse 7. He was oppressed, he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth, and he was led as a lamb to the slaughter, as a sheep before his shears is silent. So he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. Who will declare his generation? For he was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgressions of my people he was stricken. Amen? Praise God. Yet it bleed, it, verse 10, it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He has put him to grief when you make his soul an offering for sin. Amen? So Jesus paid the price for us. He was the ultimate suffering servant. So whatever we got to suffer <laughs> in this lifetime is nothing compared to what Jesus went through. Now, are, now why are we suffering? Okay, we're suffering because uh, <laughs> we live in a sin-fallen world. 
we were born into a sin fallen body. The Lord told me all your DNA is corrupted. Okay, so there are chemical things in your body already that are trying to destroy us, but God wants to heal us, right? He came that we might have life and more abundantly. You know, some people think that suffering is from God. No, it's not. Okay, or they blame God. Like, you know, I can say, why am I not healed yet? Okay, well, I know in my case, amen, I believe one of the reasons I'm going through a process. Now, God has healed some things, and I believe in him for greater works. Amen, and I believe that they, they are coming. For whatever reason, I have to go through some processes. Okay, they want me to take a new medicine, and they and I intravenously. Okay, and I asked the Lord about it, and the lines were silent. So for me, that means, okay, I have to do it until I hear it otherwise. Okay, unless I want to risk something more. Okay, then it's up to me and my faith, right? But I don't know about you, but I, I use all my resources, okay? I believe that God has put doctors in place, medicine in place to help us, amen? amen? So what does suffering do in our lives, amen? Suffering opens up the floodgates of his spirit, amen, to speak more readily to us. I can tell you I'm more in tune with God than I've ever been in my life, amen? Why? Because I need something from him, right? I mean, just being real. When we need something, then, then we go to the cross, right? Amen? All right? I mean, that's the truth. We are human. Amen? I'm listening. I'm trying to listen. Prophetess gave me a word just half an hour ago, said I have to drink six bottles of water. I think I drowned with six bottles of water. I mean, the most I ever drank was three bottles of water in one day. 16 ounces, three of those, 48 ounce, you know, that for me is a lot of water, okay? Now she's telling me, so I said, okay, wait a minute. Is that a word or a good idea? Because if it's God, I need to do it because I'm praying about some things in my body right now and I need a word. Okay, so the word was sitting right alongside of me and the word, no, she's, no, that's, that's a word. I got it a couple days ago. Okay, well then, I, amen. Well, all right, Linda, now what are you going to do? Okay, are we going to receive the word or have my own good idea? Right, God's trying to help us. He wants us to submit and obey. Sometimes we just don't want to do it. So I was sitting there. So first of all, I said, I don't know if I can do six, six bottles. My whole day is going to be taken up and preoccupied with drinking water. How am I going to do this? So right away I was planning my day out. Okay, I get up by 7.30 and I go to bed at you know, 10.30, 11 o'clock. Okay, I'm going to have to split it up into six segments and make sure I have a goal for every one of those segments that I'm drinking one 16-ounce bottle of water. I'm going to have to fit in food at some place because water fills me up. Because when I drink a lot of water, I don't feel like eating. But i gotta, I got to maintain the, the nutritional part, right? So I, I'm sitting there reasoning with all of this, right? So I thought to myself, well, maybe it's a good idea. Let's, let, let's go back and check. So I thought, okay, because, you know, the thought came back to me. So I asked her, I said, hey, Sheila, is that, is that a word from God? Or, or is that a good idea? Because she drinks a lot of water. She can drink water. I yeah, praise God for her. Okay. But, I, you know, I haven't in the past been that good of a water drinker. So, so please pray for me. So, <laughs> so she says, no, I believe that's a word. I said, okay. Well, that's the answer to my prayer then. All right, so now I'm going to obey. Right? So I'm going to ask the Lord to help me drink six bottles of water a day. Okay? It'll be, it'll be a miracle. But, but we do believe in miracles. Amen? So <laughs> Amen? So there's the word. So you see, that was a simple word. But am I going to do it? You see what I'm saying? A lot of times God tells us things, but we don't want to do it. Okay? You got to submit and obey. Amen? Praise God. So Jesus is a suffering servant. Amen? He suffered for us. He died for us. But he made it possible for us to go to heaven. He made it possible for us to get saved, healed, and delivered. Amen? So why are we going through things? Because the enemy is attacking us. Because we believe in God. And even if you don't believe in God, he's going to try, still try to do something. Amen. The Bible says he goes about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Seeking whom he may devour. So it doesn't matter. It's you, 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 whoever. He's going to try everybody. So we have to stand fast, right? Having done all, stand. We've got to use our weapons. We've got to believe in God. Amen. We've got to keep going for Jesus. We've got to contend for the faith, as Jude says. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So, you know, someone said to me the other day, well, didn't Jesus pay the price? Yes, he paid the price for salvation, for healing, for our blessings, for everything. 
but now we have to appropriate that blessing, right? We have to activate it in our life, and, and we've got to tell the devil to back off. Amen? So I hope that all of you out there, as well as I am, we are all doing that, right? We're using the word of God. I want to direct you to Philippians 3, 7. There's going to be some things in this process that God asks us to give up, okay, because this is not good for us. Now, he's going to bless you with many things. I'm going to tell you something. I came out of poverty. We, we lived in a two-room apartment, four of us living in a two-room apartment. One room was a bedroom. The other room did everything else. Okay, we had bunk beds, and we all slept in the same room. And uh, it wasn't until uh, I got married. Well, let's see. I, when I went to college, uh, I was in a dorm for about a year. But it really wasn't until I married Apostle Jeff that I had a leg up, you know, in, in, in life. He was middle class. I, I was poor. And um, I can tell you right now today, God has, God has given me much. He has blessed me. Amen. He told me to join the Army. I had to obey. I didn't know anything about the Army, but I know that I liked it. I was 20 years old when I joined the Army. And I thought I was just joining the Army for four years. I didn't know I was going to do 32. And I had no idea about their pay, their salary, what I'd have to do, nothing. All I knew is God said, join the Army. And then after I joined the Army, God told me to marry Apostle Jeff. And what a, what a great blessing he's been to me. I had no idea that was going to lead into ministry. Okay? Praise God. You've got to obey God. Amen? We're all practicing that. Amen? Praise God. But sometimes there's other things that you may have to give up that God wants you to sacrifice. Okay? So Philippians 3.7 says, But what things were gained to me, those I counted lost for Christ. Yet doubtless, and I count all things but lost for the excellency of of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ, and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. Verse 10 is pertinent. That I may know him, and the power of his resurrection, and the fellowship of his sufferings, being made conformable unto his death. If we want the power of the resurrection, which I don't know about you, but we're pressing in for that. Amen? We believe God has called us to demonstrate miracles, and there's going to be miracle signs and wonders in this house. And I just heard the prophetic word come forth before I started preaching. God confirmed it again. Amen? And you know why he confirms it? Through my own mouth. And I have to believe it, right? He's confirming. When, when you get a prophetic word, it's in your spirit also. So I noticed that he's been confirming that through my own mouth. Right? He's encouraging me at the same time He's confirming. Amen? When you prophesy something, you got you to believe it. So when doubt and unbelief tries to come at your head, which is the devil will try to do that, okay? He'll try, especially after you're, you know, four or five years in a, in a medical problem, right? You're seeing some healing, but you haven't been healed yet. Lord, you promised healing. Amen? Where is it at, Lord? Right? And then something else happens. And it seems like there's a relapse going on. The devil wants you to look at circumstances. And he wants you to think that you're falling back and that the word fell to the ground and was not true. So you have to keep confessing the word and keep believing what God said. Amen? They just told me something about osteoporosis. And the Lord said to me, Who's, uh, whose report are you going to believe? Amen? Because the devil will try you. So that's why we preach on confessing. And your words have power. You have to be very careful what you're confessing and believing in. Amen? And I spoke right up because I knew the demons were listening. I said, Lord, I'm going to believe your, your report. I'm going to believe the report of the prophets who have declared and the apostles who have declared things over my life. Amen. That word is going to come to pass. Now, I, the circumstance may look otherwise right now. And I'm going to take medicine unless you otherwise tell me. Okay, because I don't have any other word yet on that. But I know I'm going to be healed. Amen. Praise God. So what's the power of... So to know the power of the resurrection, there's sometimes there's a suffering that we go through. It's not because uh, Jesus did it. It's because the devil's challenging you. And you're going to go through something in this life, whether you know Christ or not. But praise God, we know God, right? That he makes us victorious. Amen. We are powerful through him. Amen? 
And so there's a fellowship of sufferings in that he was rejected. He was despised of men. Has anybody here ever been rejected by somebody or despised? Okay. And then if, if you're claiming the word of God and you're preaching the word of God, sometimes people will turn away from you. That's the fellowship of his sufferings too. But no one here has to be nailed on, on the cross, right? So that's, that's not what he's talking about, the fellowship of his sufferings, right? I don't, no one's here but on the cross, right? Amen. Praise God. Okay. But there's some other things for the, for the cross of Christ because of the cross of Christ, meaning because we're preaching and, and, we're, and we're living for the Lord, there might be people that turn away from you or that reject you or talk bad about you or betray you, which is all the devil, by the way. Amen. And there's going to be some things that we have to crucify in our own flesh. Okay, if it's not healthy for us, we got to stop. Linda used to, we used to eat a lot of chocolate and drink a lot of caffeine. Now, I was just released uh, a few days ago. I, was, I didn't do coffee for a long time, for over a year. Uh, I didn't do any caffeine. And, um, but the Lord just, just released me. A little while ago, I can drink a little bit, so now I'm on 10 ounces before noon. Okay. But I had to crucify my flesh. That was hard. I had to wean myself off caffeine. Okay. <laughs> I had to wean myself off chocolate and sugar. Okay, because that was not good for my neurological system. I was trying to bring health, right? So I had to do some things along with prayer, right? Does that make sense? There's always an action that we have to take, okay? When God says to you, I will do this, it means we will do it. It means you're going to have to obey. He's going to, like me, I was just told six bottles of water. I'm praying about some medical issues in my body right now, and I was just told drink six bottles of water. Okay. <laughs> Amen. So Linda Herbert's going to have to get out six bottles of water and start. Uh, can I start tomorrow? Today, okay. Pastor's hardcore. Okay, I'm going to start today. <laughs> Amen. Well, I, I got only two in so far, I think. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Pray me through, Pastor. I do want to get rid of this problem, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work on it. Amen. I appreciate the word, Lord. Praise God for the word. I mean, that's easier than surgery. Right? You got the option, Linda. Six bottles of water or surgery. I think I'll offer the six bottles of water. Right? Amen. Amen. You see what I'm saying? It pays to obey God. We have a choice. Six bottles of water with God or surgery with the doctors. Now, I love my doctors, but who wants to get cut up? And then you got to pray against infection and that you got the right doctors. You got to pray that you heal. You got pain to go through. Who needs that? Let's do six bottles of water. Now you know what I'm going to tell myself. I'm going to encourage myself daily. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Praise God. Yes, Lord. Philippians 3.14. Where's Philippians? 3.14. Did we just read that? Okay. <laughs> he just said it to me again. Let me get the word. Yes, God. Yep. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I press. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, let us, as many as are mature... Okay. Amen. Have this mind. And if anything you think otherwise, God will reveal it to you. So we're going to forget those things which lay behind. Amen. Forget those things which lay behind. Forgive whoever you need to forgive. And forget. That's the old chapter. This is a new season. God said 2022 January is a new season. That's why we have a new name. Victory Church in Alexandria. It is a prophetic sign of a new season, and it's victorious. God is speaking to us. Every time we say the name of this church, victory, it gets it in your spirit. It reaffirms it. We have victory in Christ, and we do, or else we'd all be dead, okay, or maimed, or in a wheelchair. I may be in that buggy right there, but I'm not in a wheelchair, praise God, and I'm getting stronger daily. Amen? You're getting stronger daily. You're still on your feet, right? 
Amen. Praise God. Amen. So we press towards the goal. We have to contend for the faith. Fight for it. Don't let it go. So I want to exhort you today. Amen. God is still on the throne. He's still with you. He has not abandoned you. He will never abandon you. He hasn't abandoned me. So we're in a process. We've got a little ways to go yet. Amen. But we're going to look better on the other side. What was it? Tim Clement. That brother, I loved him. I don't know. It seems to me he went home to heaven a little early, but that's not my that's not my call. You don't know if you wanted to go or whatever. And um, but he had a song like that, right? Yeah. That he looked better tomorrow than he did yesterday or something. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. I see you in the future. Thank you, and you look better, yeah. and you look better than what you do now. Yeah. Amen. So let me tell you, the people who know me personally can say that. Amen. We look better on the inside now than when we did before. And unfortunately, sometimes, so what the devil meant for harm, God gets good out of it. Always. That's Romans 8, 28. All things are working together for our good. Now, again, God did not do it. Okay? He didn't, he didn't put this neurological problem on, on me. The only open door that I know was the burn pits. I don't know who knows what I was breathing in in the Middle East, right? I mean, doesn't air go everywhere? The wind goes everywhere, right? You don't know how the chemistry in your body is going to react with something you're breathing in. Even, even chemicals. My husband, they prescribe him certain things, and then they prescribe me the same thing. My body could not handle it. I ended up in ER one night, taking a low dose of something that he takes higher. Right? Doctor prescribed it, thinking it wouldn't be any, any problem. My body did not react. It, it did not react well at all to that. I thought I was having a heart attack. I was claiming, <laughs> I was rebuking heart attack. Okay? I said, Jeff, get me down to the ER. And let's get this checked out so I'm the devil not playing with my mind. That's what I do I love about hospitals and doctors. Because then I get, a, I, I get a report in the natural of what's going on. So I know how to pray. Okay, and so that, so they, they got me down there in, in ER, and the doc comes in. She's checking out all, all my stuff, and she says, uh, she says, your EKG is showing normal. But I'm saying it's doing this. <laughs> okay, she said, your, your blood work is showing normal. So I can tell that old devil to go jump. He's a liar. Okay. He's a liar and a deceiver. Confess something so it would come on me. Okay? He was trying to make me say there was a heart attack. I didn't say that. I said, Jeff, something's going on. Uh, I, I don't feel right. I'm sh- I was having shortness of breath. I was having the signs. Okay? So we got down there, and she says, there's nothing wrong with you. I was so shocked, happily. Then I said right in front of that, devil's a liar. <laughs> Amen? Amen? So that's when she, she uh, actually prescribed me an anxiety pill. It was what it was. It was an anti-depression thing. Okay, because, you know, she's trying to help. And uh, so I thought, well, I'll, I'll try one. It's only like five milligram or something, which is pretty low. And, <laughs> and then I ended up in ER again. Amen? It didn't react well with my body at all. Okay? So you have to be careful with that stuff, right? Now I pray over every medication, make sure it's going to react right and jive with my body. Even you, when you call me for prayer, you'll know that I pray that that way for you too. Amen. I always pray that the medication jives. Amen. Because we have chemistry going on in our body. It's different for every person. Plus, when you age, things change. Okay? All right? So, but God works all things together for our good. Okay? All things. So the devil is trying to you know, do away with you, but he's not going to be allowed to. We keep trusting in God. And through our circumstance, through our situation, amen, we know, you know, our faith builds, right? I know I'm stronger today than I was last, last year. So physically, I mean, it looked that great. But on the inside, hey, God has already saved me so many times. He saved me on 9-11. Praise God during the, during the Pentagon. Amen. He saved me in Iraq so many times. Praise God, I was over there a lot, in Afghanistan, Middle East, all over. 
There are many guys, that, many people came back without legs and arms and different things. I was even shot at. Amen. That's why I have a combat action badge. It's the only way you get that. I was shot at, and the bullet never hit me. You know, God saved me from so many things. Amen. So I don't know what was in the air. Amen. Uh, I, I know I was around that vicinity at that time, but I don't claim that. I rebuke all those curses out of my body. Amen. And I believe God for complete healing. First Peter 2.24 is still truthful. God's word is still true, no matter what we're going through. Amen. So I want to exhort you today. Amen. Contend for the faith. Don't give up, no matter what's going on. And there's going to be times when it seems like you're going through really relapse, which means like, okay, Lord, I thought you, you promised me healing, but it looks like I'm getting worse. Don't worry about what it looks like. The devil keeps wanting us to look at the circumstances, okay? And that's human because our eyes see, <laughs> amen? So I, I, I urge you, if there's something going on, though, I do believe in preventive maintenance, if I can say it like, like that, preventive me medical. The minute I think there's something going on, I get checked out because I want to see what sneaky, putt, sneaky uh, boots is trying to do next, okay? Slow foot. I always try to say, okay, what's the devil trying to do next? I rebuke that in Jesus' name. Amen. So I personally like blood tests. Amen. They, they tell a lot of stuff. You can check your vitamins. You can check what's going on. We need to use our resources. Okay. Use the resources that God has provided. Amen. And then I pray. When I see some, 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 something that's low, take a vitamin if that's what it takes. Amen. If there's something starting, okay, like the eye doctor was checking my eyes out the other day. And he says, you're only 60 years old, but there's a medication that's beginning to induce something. So I'm rebuking that right now. Okay, I'm taking that knowledge, and I'm rebuking it. Amen? And I'm commanding my eyes to be whole in Jesus' name. Right? I'm speaking to them. So we use our resources. And all of that is contending for the faith. Amen? The more faith you have, the more you, you get in the kingdom of God. Everything is by faith. Amen. In Hebrews chapter 11, we read, through faith, they subdued kingdoms. Amen. Amen. It's all about faith, having faith in God. So all these trials and tribulations that we're going through today, they're conforming us into the image of Christ. Amen. Instead of destroying us, God is building us. So what the devil meant for harm, God is turning around for our good. We're going to have greater faith, greater trust in him. So I encourage you today, keep, keep pressing for the goal. Amen? Keep pressing. Don't give up today. Amen? So if you all would stand, Father, we just come before you right now in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for even the strength to do this message today. I thank you, Father, Lord, for all you're doing in our midst. Father, thank you for health and healing in Jesus' name. And Father, we give you glory and honor and praise today in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, you can be seated. And uh, before we stop today, uh, is there anybody? Who's, who's on chat today? We've got Jam. Hi, Jam. God bless you guys. Amen. I just love all you guys, man. You're such a great team. Amen. I just really appreciate it so much. Amen. Um, and I just heard eyes again. So if anybody has eye trouble today of any kind, I want you to put your hands on your eyes today, right now. Amen. I'm hearing a little bit of lead, uh, little bit of healing, a little bit of well, whatever. Might be might be more than a little bit. <laughs> whatever you're doing is always great, God. Amen. So, Father, we just thank you right now for visual. Father, we thank you. We speak to the optic nerve. We speak to the lens in the eyes right now. We we break the power of uh, an assignment over anybody who's having an eye problem uh, right now in the name of Jesus. Cataract, glaucoma, any type of um, disease trying to form in the macula. In the name of Jesus, Father, we break the power of it right now. In Jesus' name. And Father, we claim health and healing, Father, right now for eyes. Amen. Does anybody have any kind of arm trouble? Aches in the arm of any kind? Anybody have any, any trouble? Okay, Pastor. All right. Any, anybody else? One, two, three. Okay, four. Okay. Um, you guys can stand or sit, whatever's good for you. Anybody on chat jam with arm issues? I just got arm. Praise God. I'm, I'm hearing the Lord say, come on up and sit in this front row if you happen to be here. Amen. Praise God. Um, and I will I will put my little masky deal on. Let's see, Rena. 
Thank you, Jesus, for walking. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God for good balance and strength in all my limbs. In Jesus' name. Back up. Posture good. Head up. I've got to speak to my parts. Just sit here. Praise God. We are, we're, we've got our shots and we're bo boosted too. Amen. Thank you, Lord. We bind any type of COVID and COVID uh, reaction right now in the name of Jesus. Break the power of it right now in Jesus' name. Arm issues? Okay, Father, in the name of Jesus, for Ra Raquel, Father, we just, I mean, for Alice. Yeah, corporal tunnel. Father, we just release a healing right now to all these people, even even on the on the chat right now. We break the power of it right now. We come against all these arm issues, uh, arthritis, tendonitis, broken bone, just pain in the arms. In Jesus' name, we break the power of it right now. In Jesus' name, Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, God. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Yes, God. Total healing right now. By his stripes, you were healed. Amen. 1 Peter 2.24. Which, which arm, Pastor? This one? Mm -hmm. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just release healing right here. Mm -hmm. All the way down. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I just come against that right now. Is that a type, a type of sciatic nerve type thing? Yes, in both arms. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just break the power of this yeah. right now in Jesus' name. And I command a healing to manifest right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, God. Thank you, Father. The Lord told me to put my oil in my pocket. And now I know why. Father, we just thank you. Right now, total healing. Right now, in the name of Jesus. Both arms, Lord. Set her free, Father. In the name of Jesus. Yes, God. Sciatic nerve, I just speak to you. Nerve endings in the arms right now. I command you to be whole and be healed. Right now. In Jesus' name. Charlene, where, where is it at? Is it just in that, that part? Yes. Father, we just command a healing right now in Jesus' name. Yes, God, we stir up that gift of working of miracles right now and healing gifts right now. We command a healing, pain out. We break that assignment right now in Jesus' name. We're at, Bill. Father, we just command a healing right now in Jesus' name. Total healing right now in Jesus' name. Pain out in Jesus' name. Okay, where's the pain? Father, we just command a healing right now. In Jesus' name, I command a healing right now. Manifest in Jesus' name. Yes, God, in Jesus' name. Pain out right now. In Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, thank you. Now we turn to your seat. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Lord. If you know for a fact on any of these, that you did get a healing, tell us. Okay, because it builds our faith too. Okay, thank you, Lord. Well, I don't know what I'm doing here, but okay. Is, is this okay? Thank you, Pastor. She's always taking care of me. Oh, my goodness. Apostle Des is on the line. <laughs> Okay, Apostle Des, <laughs> thanks for praying me through this sermon. Amen. Praise God. Um, is somebody recording this? Okay. All right, Apostle Des, we uh, got you. Father, we just stir the anointing right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. I'm always careful about prophesying to my seniors. Amen. But Father, we just thank you, Father. Yes, God, we give you glory, we give you honor, we give you praise. For the Lord says, surely, daughter, surely I'm doing a new work within you, within your home, within your family, within your church, even within your network, says the Lord. And the Lord says that you've known this is a new day. You've known it's a new hour. The Lord says that you've been, there's been a stirring in your spirit in a new way that you've not recognized or it hasn't been as accentuated as it is now. There's a, I see a new fire uh, coming upon you, Apostle Des, and it's not a fiery trial. It's the, 
Yeah, you always talk about the fire. <laughs> yeah, and it's the fire of the Holy Ghost uh, coming in. It's a new level of the anointing uh, coming in you in a new way. And I see that there are some things that he's um, burning out around you, okay? There were some, um, there's some individuals uh, with doubt and unbelief. Some of it's normal, you know, because of things we go through uh, in, in the church and other places. And, and the Lord says that it's, he's purifying some things. And he's causing a new cleansing in, in different ways, in different people's lives. And the Lord says, daughter, even as others have been going through processes all around you, you've recognized some things that are going on with them. And you've been careful um, to not, uh, well, um, you've been careful to let the Holy Spirit do his thing. Amen, to put it bluntly. And the Lord says, well done, because he's working in them processes. He's working in them uh, to bring them to a new level. And the Lord says that you understand the various levels of God and what it takes to get that resurrection power. And I hear the Lord say that, you know, many people talk the talk. They want the power of the resurrection, but they're not willing to go through the process. But the Lord says, you're one who's willing to go through the process. And you're totally sold out for Christ. I see, a, we had a purple shirt in here some years ago. It said, all in. And you are all in. You're all in for Christ. Amen. You and Apostle Guy are all in. Praise God for you. What a great example. And so the Lord says that I am healing you from the inside out. I'm healing those in your household. And the Lord says, I'm rectifying some things in the process. And the Lord says, um, I'm hearing him say, thank you for letting me do my thing. <laughs> Amen. I've never heard the Lord say quite like that before. So, Lord, we just thank you right now for Apostle Desri. And the Lord also says to you, Apostle Des, he's heard the cry of your heart. He knows everything going on. And he is, you know, he's right there. Amen. He's right there. He's listening. He's assuring your heart. And you know that he is. He's right there. Praise God. And the Lord says that things are going to get better as the days go on. Amen. And there's new covenant partners coming into you. I see uh, many covenant partners coming into you. Oh, praise God. Many covenant partners coming. And I still see greenbacks coming. Greenbacks are flying through the air. Amen. So, Father, we release that. Uh, right now, there's increase coming. The Lord says, remember to speak the increase. Amen. Speak the increase that, that money is coming. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And there's nothing wrong with that. Amen. Because he owns the cattle in the thousand hills. Amen. The more finance we have, the more we can do for the Lord. Amen. So, Father, we thank you right now. Father, I just release a fresh encouragement upon Apostle Guy and Desiree Fox right now in the name of Jesus. And, Father, we take authority over any pain that might be in their body right now. In the name of Jesus, we command healing right now to manifest. Right now, Father, we just pull down, the Lord, that healing right now and manifest it in the name of Jesus. And, Father, we thank you and we give you praise right now in Jesus' name. Father, we seal the word and we charge them with it in Jesus' name. Amen. I just heard the Lord say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Amen. Isn't that what it's about, to, that the Lord tells us, well done. Amen. Thank you, Father. Amen. Laura Oxendine. Am I okay? Oh, yes, please. Yeah. Amen for Apostle Desiree. Uh, she's always so sweet to pray and faithful to us. Uh, the Lord says, surely, daughter, even there is restoration coming to your household. The Lord says restoration is your theme in this hour and even in this time. The Lord says not only restoration in your household, restoration in your ministry, restoration in your faith, restoration in your body. The Lord says it's restoration all around you. And the Lord says there was even surely a recent disappointment that almost shook your faith. But the Lord says you stood fast and you stood firm. And the Lord says I'm restoring restoring all that the canker worm has tried to steal, says the Lord. So the Lord says, begin to declare and decree that restoration over you. I see there's even a restoration even in your heart, says the Lord. The Lord says, there's things that's going to be even restored about you that you had no clue needed to be restored. And the Lord says, you're going to look back on it and say, wow, this is what you meant. 
okay, this is what you meant. And so the Lord says there's even going to be a stronger fighting position, a stronger place of battle, and there's e even a greater confidence. But the Lord says to even remind you that surely you have a great overcomer's anointing. Remember that you are one that is even called mightily. And the Lord says it won't always be like this, for surely a season of rest is even nigh upon you. Father, we speak to Apostle Guy. We thank you, Lord, for healing and restoration, too. And I just even hear the Lord that he's restoring his faith as well. And the Lord says he's given an increased energy just to even fight and even overcome. The Lord says the, uh, it's, it's the, the end of the battling is near, says the Lord. The Lord says don't give up. Don't leave the fight. But the Lord says, keep pushing. And the Lord says, there's even unexpected ones in your ministry that is even going to come upon you and even raise your arms and even begin to hold your arms up. The Lord says, the intercessors are even praying. I'm even calling ones from across the nations, across the land, across the world to even have dedicated prayer for you and Apostle Guy and even your ministry. So the Lord says, well done, thy good and faithful servant. The Lord says, I'm I'm recharging, I'm reboosting, and I'm just recentering and refocusing you, says the Lord. The Lord says, surely my anointing is going to propel. And the Lord says, there's an increase of healing anointing that has even been placed on your life. The Lord says, you have even been promoted this day. You shall even lay your hands on the sick and they shall recover. And the Lord says, there's been times where you've laid hands and you said, Lord, by faith, I receive. Lord, by faith, I know. But the Lord says, you're going to even lay hands and see the immediate manifestation. And so the Lord says, get ready, daughter, for surely you are one that I've called on my front lines. Surely you are one that I've called to go before. But the Lord says, no, that the Lord your God is with you. The Lord your God is before you. The Lord your God is your rear guard. And so the Lord says, once again, daughter, well done, thy good and faithful servant. And remember that promotion this day is your portion. The Lord says the promotion that you have this day is even that one of a battler's anointing. The Lord says it's even uh, a spirit of acceleration that's even nigh upon you. When you speak it, it has to happen. When you speak it, the atmosphere has to change. And the Lord says that it's a type of battler's anointing that you're operating in with this new promotion, says the Lord. So, Father, we charge her with that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And a couple of new folks. Let's, let's, let's take one apiece there and grab one. Okay, if you'd help, help me out. Shannon? Yep, Shannon. Okay, where's Shannon at? All right. All right, this is Prophetess Dr. Shayla. She's going to prophesy to you, okay? <laughs> All right. Father, we thank you, Lord, for Shannon. Father, I thank you, Lord, for bringing her here this day. The Lord says, even daughter, there has even been, uh, I just even sense that there was a hesitancy. And you said, Lord, what is this about? The Lord says, because I've given you a great spirit of discernment. And the Lord says, you are one that even knows things about people, knows things about the spirit. But the Lord says, I'm calling that to even be uh, elevated even up higher. The Lord says, don't allow past experiences to even taint your vision of which I have for you. The Lord says, you're right on time, and surely you hear my voice with clarity. And so the Lord says, I'm bringing you in to this place to even hear with greater clarity, hear with greater anointing, for surely even dreams and visions are your portion. The Lord says, there's even a scribe's anointing. I'm even going to cause you to write. I'm going to cause you to even begin to... Um, <laughs> Even, amen. The Lord says, get ready. Surely that anointing is even increasing. The Lord says, even there's going to come a day where you begin to publish. I even see books. I see teacher's manuals. The Lord mm -hmm. says, because there's a strong teacher's anointing yes. that's even within you because you know how to understand the word. And I just even see young people around you, young children that you'll even begin to minister to and they'll truly understand uh, who God is. And the Lord says, your mission is showing people and even young people their identity in Christ Jesus. And the Lord says there's, you, you have a great testimony. Mm -hmm. There's been some things and, and things that happened to you even as a young girl. And the Lord says you overcame all of that. And the Lord says you even allowed me to heal you in ways that you never even imagined. The Lord says you allowed me to even restore you. You allowed me to even just pour myself out into you. And so the Lord says, that is a true testimony. 
That is a true testimony that will stand the test of times. That is a testimony that will not only lead people to salvation, but even lead them to their destiny. The Lord says, I've called you into my kingdom to be even one that will encourage and help those destiny builders. And the Lord says, that is one that I have called you to. The Lord says, you surely you are my end time prophet. You are mm -hmm. one that is even going to yep. speak my word mm -hmm. and even be a mouthpiece, mm -hmm. says the Lord. So the Lord says, I mm -hmm. even this season right now is your mm -hmm. calling season. The mm -hmm. Lord says, come forth, daughter, for surely mm -hmm. I've called you to be ye separate. And so, Father, we call her forth yes. to the office of the prophetess, yes. Father. I thank you, Lord, that this is her thank calling you, season. That's right. Father, I call forth yes. even the right training, the right yes. covering. Right. The Lord says there will be a season where you will be set in the place where you will be yes. even commissioned. But the Lord That's says, right. you must hear my voice and stay in lockstep with me. For surely I have great things in store for you. And for surely it's Praise a time God. of destiny and promise. Yes, so God. Father, I just charge her with yes, that. Right I now. call her forth right now yes. to the office of the prophetess. Thank and Father, you, and the Lord says that you even knew this mm -hmm. for years. You knew this as a little girl. You knew this, that yeah. there was something different. And you say, Lord, that's what I want. I don't God. understand it, but that's what I need. Yeah. Lord, that's what I want to be. I just want to be close to you. Whatever that means, that's what I want. And the Lord says, I'm fulfilling the desires of your heart. The Lord says, the desires of your heart that you thought were just generated by you. But the Lord says, no, that's my calling for which I called you even before the foundation of this world. I placed that desire in you before you were in your mother's womb. The Lord says, you are just walking out your destiny. This is a plan ordained meeting, planned ordained time in your life. Because the Lord says, don't you know that the times and seasons are mm -hmm. in my hands? I know the beginning from the ending. Mm -hmm. And the Lord says, surely I'm mm -hmm. guiding you there. So the Lord says, even walk with me. All I need is that, yes, Lord, and I shall surely even show you. You'll begin to see things differently. You'll begin to see the authority that you have over your life. You'll begin to see those who are around you or who are for you and who are against you. But the Lord says, fear not, for everywhere you go, for surely I am leading you there. So, Father, we charge her with that. Yes. In Jesus' name we pray. Well, stand, Amen. Stand fast. And so, um, yeah, I was wondering if she was going to call you forth. Amen. Praise God. That's good. Um, the Lord says that he didn't tell you sooner. You knew some things in your spirit, but the timing was key, okay? So there's been some frustration within you because you're wondering, okay, Lord, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready. When are we going to hear this? When are we going to hear Come on, Lord, come on. And uh, so we understand that, amen? But the timing was key, amen? For whatever reason, he wanted you in this place to receive that word now, amen? And so timing with God is always perfect. So, Father, we bind frustration, right now we release it from her right now in the name of jesus and father she's coming forth in full bloom just like the flowers i was talking about the beautiful flowers father in full bloom in jesus name there'll be an acceleration upon your life now praise god because you're in calling amen it'll be very important you get in a place where you can be taught amen the more is caught than taught you even got to get the anointing amen you got to be in the right pond of fish amen <laughs> so that the water can infuse you Amen. The anointing can, can infuse you. Amen. And uh, I'm, I'm getting a word on, on your family. Father, we lift up our family to you right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we just thank you right now. Yes, God, for entire family. If anybody's not saved, they'll get saved. Father, we thank you, Lord, shall not be rejected. We bind any type of rejection uh, right now in the name of Jesus. There's a lot of people who don't understand you, and that's because you're called as a prophetess. It has nothing about, <laughs> it's because of your spiritual calling. Okay, that's what the problem is. If you take a poll in this place right now, you'll find we all feel the same way, okay? We all feel out of place with our family or somebody, okay? It's, it's the spiritual calling. You're called and separated to God, amen? So just love them anyway, amen? So, Father, we just thank you. We bind that rejection and that sorrow and the grief and the things that you've had to experience. That's suffering right there, amen? Father, we just break that right now in Jesus' name, okay? Okay, let's get, let's get a practice walking. Just a second. Wait a minute, just a minute. We're learning to walk. In time prophet a couple of days ago. Amen. In the, in the parking lot. We break off that frustration right now in the name of Jesus, that grief, sorrow, and rejection. 
we break that assignment over her life right now in Jesus name and there's been a devouring spirit trying to devour you in certain ways we break that right now in the name of Jesus amen Shayla can you help me with the next one all right, Miss Sydney Gray. Amen. God bless Sydney. Father, I thank you, Lord, for Sydney. Father, I thank you, Lord, for even calling her here this day. And the Lord says, surely you even come here, even uh, expecting even a great rejuvenation. And the Lord says, even being in this atmosphere, the Lord says, the spirit of rejuvenation is even upon you. Even the restoration word that was even come forth earlier, the Lord says restoration surely is your portion. The Lord says I'm restoring your finances. I'm restoring all that even the canker worm has stolen. The Lord says there has been a breach in the days that have gone by. But the Lord says begin to speak to that area. And the Lord says there's power and there's anointing in your, in your voice. There's power and anointing in your words. And the Lord says, begin to even study declarations because you're going to declare and decree a thing and it's surely going to be established. And the Lord says, even begin to speak to your situation. You're one that has always said, speak to that mountain and be thou removed and cast into the sea. The Lord says, because it's always been in you, the Lord says, that's my anointing that is even over you. My anointing that even has been set within you. And so the Lord says, that is your scripture for this season. And the Lord says, surely my authority and my hand is even upon your life. The Lord says, there's even restoration in your health. You've been crying out for even health. And there's been certain um, little aches and pains. And there's even been thoughts of, oh God, is it this? So-and-so struggled with this. Is it that? And the Lord says, no, daughter, for surely you are healed and you are made whole. And the Lord says, continue to even declare and decree that over your life. Begin to prophesy that over your life. And the Lord says, even prophesy the manifestation of your healing, and you shall even surely see it, says the Lord. So the Lord says, continue to fight on. And the Lord says, there's a great warrior's anointing that is over your life. There's an intercessor's anointing. I see you interceding for even young people. There's young people in your family. There's people all around you. You prayed them in. You prayed them up. And some you had to even pray out. But the Lord says, even get ready, daughter, for surely that mantle of intercession is even resting upon you, says the Lord. So that means a greater authority in your prayer is even going to take place. And the Lord says, even for this nation, you have a heart for the injustices that you've even seen around you. Yes. But the Lord says that is that of a prophet who even knows right and knows wrong. The Lord says there's even one uh, that you're, there's, it's black or it's white. There's no shades of gray with you. There's no lukewarm with you. But the Lord says, that is my anointing. And mm -hmm. the Lord says, even I'm building that mm -hmm. this day. The Lord says, I'm tweaking some things. The Lord says, I'm, there's also a strong spirit of compassion over you. Mm -hmm. And the Lord says, you're a giver. You will give and you will give and you will give. Some have even taken advantage of your giving. But the mm -hmm. Lord says, you have given, given with such a pureness of heart that he can do so might he can work so mightily with that that he's going to return it to you a hundredfold the lord says you've lost nothing the lord says even as that compassion is even within you the lord says i'm going to give you even a boldness and even a good godly no some you're going to have to bless some you're going to have to take action but the lord says be led of my spirit be led of my anointing and i will surely even see uh, show you um, the next step in your ministry, the Lord says, because that is a ministry call over your life. And there's even an evangelistic thrust yes. that's even upon you to that's even right. win souls, save souls, mm -hmm. and even testify for yes. the kingdom of God. So, Father, we charge her with that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I got a little piece and then we'll do a Zayir or two. Okay. okay. All right, Shane. Um, sister, I'm just hearing the Lord say that you're also going to be doing missions work, a type of missions work in, in the days that are ahead. There's international travel coming up uh, for, for you, for the Lord says that I've anointed you for international ministry. And the Lord says that you're going to touch the lives overseas of, of different ones. And God says that you'll not be afraid to prophesy into their lives. And the Lord says you will see signs, miracles, and wonders, says the Lord, that will come through your hands. You're going to lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. And so the Lord says start, uh, and I know you already believe it, but really start uh, asking the Lord for manifestation right, right now, okay? There's, there's no reason to, to wait. 
and I sense that you've already seen some things, but you're going to see a whole lot more. So, Father, we just release that anointing upon her for signs, miracles, and wonders right now. And I just heard exploits. You're going to be one that's going to be moving exploits. Amen. Praise God. You know, like the axe head floating on the, on the water? <laughs> that's something what I call an exploit. Amen. There's going to be a supernatural, unique manifestation of God's power that's going to come through you. And you are publishing, too. You, you are going to publish. I don't know what your background is, but you're, there's a scribe anointing upon you. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we release the scribe anointing right now. And, Father, we thank you for the international call that she also has. In Jesus' name, amen. Did we get all of them? That was for Sydney, whoever it was. Was it Sydney? Sydney? Who's Sydney? Sydney, whoever Sydney. Oh, okay, whatever. Okay, whatever, whoever it was. Okay, Zaire. Zaire. Oh, Zaire, that's right. Yeah, so I, I prophesied to him already. Would, okay. would you mind? Amen. Father, we just thank you, Lord, for Zaire. Father, I thank you, Lord, for a strong man, a strong mind. And the Lord says, surely you are a strong man after my own heart. The Lord says, there's even a Davidic anointing that's even nigh upon you, says the Lord. The Lord yeah. says, I'm even raising you up to even be a king in my kingdom, says the Lord. And the Lord says, I'm giving you words of wisdom. There's a strong spirit of acceleration over your life. The Lord says, you are called to the fivefold ministry, but specifically, I'm seeing that apostolic anointing that's even on your life. The Lord says, there's a, a deep well of even understanding my word. There's a deep well of being a visionary, and there's a deep well of being an establisher. The Lord says the establisher's anointing is strong on your life. I'm hearing businesses. There's a strong entrepreneurial anointing. There's financial investments that are even uh, swirling around in there, and there's even just business partnerships. The Lord has even given you a great business mind, and the Lord says there's people around you that have heard the business mind, but it seems a little far out. But the Lord says it's even um, God visions, godly visions. The Lord says, I'm tweaking some areas, but the Lord says, even know that I'm going to graze that boldness up within you, that you're going to even move out on those desires that I've even placed within you. So the Lord says, even get ready, son, for surely fear not. Don't worry about finances. The Lord says, I'm causing finances to even rain forth and even come forth. And the Lord says, there's unexpected sponsors that are even going to partner with you, says the Lord. And the Lord says, surely I have great things in store for you. And I just even hear there's some sort of, um, uh, I, I would say like replevin, but some kind of, I don't know, some kind of government thing that's going on right now, legal something. There's some money held up. That is your portion. And the Lord says that surely he's even breaking open those doors and even turning loose uh, what is rightfully owed to you. And so, Father, I just thank you, Lord. I command whatever's in this government process, whatever's uh, inheritance, that anything yes. that's trying to stop from yes. uh, what is owed to him. Yes. And, Father, I just declare and decree that it will shake loose, even yes. shake loose this week, and there will yes. be even come forth a good report. Yes, and the Jesus. Lord says, I desire to show myself strong for you. You're like the like the state of Missouri. You got to show me. <laughs> and it's like, show me, God. Amen. Show me this. Right? And so the Lord says, surely, surely, son, allow me to work in your life. Yes, allow son. me to move in your life. And the Lord says, surely, you will, you will know that you know that you know that the spirit of the Lord is yes, working son. on your behalf, says the Lord. So, Father, we bless him with it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Shayla. Um, who's doing announcements tonight? Anybody doing announcements? Okay, I'm, I'm going to punt. Okay. <laughs> we'll okay. do them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Amen. All right. So, Father, we just seal the word right now. Father, uh, let me just clean this up real quick here. Uh, for Alice, she asked for request salvation in her family. All those who need self salvation in their family. Amen. You can claim this. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you right now. Father, we just ask, Father, in Jesus' name. Yes, God, that, Lord, save Alice's family right now, all those in needing that have loved ones in their family that are not saved. Father, we release that anointing. Father, draw them to salvation in Jesus' name. Amen. And we want to do that right now. If there's anybody out there that say, uh, Sean, are you, you going to cover this at the end, salvation? salvation. Yeah, okay, oh, good. Okay. And got, Chesha, oh, yeah, you got Chesha needs encouragement. Chesha, anybody need encouragement? I need encouragement. Yeah, Amen. Yeah. <laughs> Father, we release encouragement right now in jesus name lord i thank you for the word that's come forth today 
Amen. Oh, God, I just thank you, Lord, for the prophetic word, for the Logos, just for you. Lord. He's a God of hope. He gives hope. Amen. You are hope, Lord. Without you, we have no hope. Amen. There's always hope in Christ. Father, we thank you for treasure. Father, we rebuke and bind and break off the assignment of depression yes. right now in Jesus' name and discouragement and disappointment by anybody here who's experiencing that. Yes. Lord, there's always great things in Christ. There's always a better day in Christ. And Lord, we just thank you for encouragement. We release it right now in Jesus' name. Amen. You got anything, Sheila? Yes. Let me just okay. pray for Cherie Civil. Um, we pray for her grandchildren. Father, and I declare and decree for healing from COVID right now, even yes. the one that has COVID, Father, it will not be contagious. It will not infect the rest of the family. But I just declare and decree a healing right now in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Sheila. Yeah. Amen. We just seal those words right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So everyone give the Lord a praise. Amen. Amen. So I have your announcements for today. Amen. And so I'm going to need a little help from Elder back there. But I do want to say that um, thank you all for showing up. Thank you all for um, reading the emails. And those who are not receiving text messages, we are doing text alerts now as well. We did have to close on um, do Facebook service on Friday because of inclement weather. So if you would like to re sign up to receive text, um, we'll have a sign up sheet in the back. I just need your name and your contact information, basically your phone number so that I can submit it. And then you'll also receive alerts and text messages as well. Amen. How many of you all are already receiving text? Oh, good. Amen. Awesome. All right. So our announcements are on Saturday, February the 12th, we have a seniors event. Yes, we do. The seniors are celebrating Valentine's Day on Zoom. And so they will be um, being on Zoom at 5 o'clock from 5 to 6.30. Um, the Zoom link will be sent out this week, so we'll send it out in the bulletin or the email that goes out with all of our updates for the month. So if you're not getting that again, make sure you see us in the back so you can get that information. So that's a Zoom Seniors Valentine's Day celebration. It's 5 o'clock from 5 to 6.30. The only requirement is that you are mature. Amen. Amen? That's it. And if you have a loved one who would like to participate, as much as, as you are, they can still participate as long as you're the mature one. Amen. <laughs> so there you go. Um, also, we have a holiday in the month of February, so we have President's Day. So just a reminder that on the 18th of February, we will not have service. That's a Friday night. On the 20th, we will not have prophetic class. And on the 21st, we will not have our Monday night service, and that's in honor of President's Day. And then at the end of the month, on the 24th, I'm sorry, the 25th of February and the 27th, we will have the apostles, Diane and Enos Chamberlain. They will be Zooming in, amen, um, and doing our conference for us. They are powerful men and women of God. They always start us off with a great word for the year. They are, you know, the whole entire ministry conference is prophetic ministry. It's just, you don't even need to get a word because the whole thing is prophetic. So, again, that will be Facebook only, meaning we won't be in search in church on the 25th or the 27th because they will be doing a Zoom conference with us via Facebook, okay? So all of that information will be going out to you all this week. And I think that's all we have for the month of February. Yes. Yes, and we do have a special event on February the 11th. That's our first special event. Well, let me go back. On February the 4th, we have Miracle Night. So that's our Miracle Night on Friday night. So the first month of every month, of every, the first Friday of every month will be Miracle Night. So coming, expecting a miracle. If you need to pray, fast, whatever you need to do, that's your night. You want to come and be ready to receive. On the 11th is our special event night. We don't actually have a title for that event yet. Amen. So it's to be announced, but um, it would be great. So it's more of a kind of an event where you're going to, 
Amen. Just come and see. We're not even going to tell you. You're just going to have to read the newsletter and come and see. Amen. Some things are just, you got to come and trust God and be led and come see him. Amen. All right. So I think that's it. You're welcome. Pastor Sean, you want to close us out? Well, amen. Did y'all get something out of today's service? Give God a praise for our apostle. Our apostle Dr. Linda Herbert, amen. The Bible says in Revelation 12, 11, and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives to the death, amen. All right, so real quick, um, anybody in here or anybody in Facebook, if you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ, please uh, repeat after me, say, Father God, I repent of all my sins. Your word says, that if I confess with my mouth that Jesus is the Lord and I believe with all my heart that you, God, raised Jesus from the dead, your word says I shall be saved. And your word also says that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So we thank you, God, for saving me. So I, we believe that if you pray that prayer in here, or on Facebook that you are saved. So we thank God for that, and we rejoice that you are now in the family of God. Amen? Amen. So you can stand to your feet, and we can dismiss. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, for the word. I thank you, Lord, for the testimony of our great apostle in Jesus' name, Father God. Father, we just thank you, Father God, as we go, Father God, that you just continue to watch over us and protect us as well as our families in Jesus' name, Father God. Father God, I decree and declare Psalm 91 over each and every person here and on Facebook in Jesus' name. Your word says, no evil shall befall us, neither shall any plague, sickness, disease, COVID-19, Omicron variant, any variant will not come down our dwelling in the name of Jesus, Father God. We plead the blood of Jesus over each and every person here and on Facebook in Jesus' name, Father God. And we thank you, Father God, that your angels be on assignment to protect us while we're here and on the byways and highways in Jesus' name. And, my, and may, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of your Holy Spirit be with us all. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you and have a wonderful evening.